All right, this is video number five. Uh, we're talking about the last topic in period one, 1 1.7 causation in period one, the learning objective that's given to us by the uh, APUSH CED is explain the effects of the development of transatlantic voyages from 1491 to 1607. Now, all of the key concepts that we're gonna go over here in topic 1.7 are gonna be the same ones that we talked about in topic 1.1, contextualizing period one. The big difference is the way in which we are interpreting these key concepts. Now we're focusing more on causation, on what were the causes or how were the things that we've studied uh, causing other things to happen, what were the effects? And so we're starting with uh, the effects of environment on native societies. Um, the key concept is as natives pop, native populations migrated and settled across the vast expanse of North America over time, they developed distinct and increasingly complex societies by adapting to and transforming their diverse environments. Um, so natives' living patterns were really a direct result of their environment. So there's that causation. The Aztecs, as you can see on the far right, they were living in that uh, marshy area in the middle of Lake Texcoco, and so they adapted to it. So we have the mound builders up here on the top left, uh, and then the use of Three Sisters farming on the bottom left um, that's commemorated on this coin. Now, the use of agriculture and the division of labor that uh, was yielded by the use of agriculture uh, led to more solidified gender roles. Now, the next key concept, 1.1, Roman numeral one, says different native societies adapted to and transformed their environments through the use, through innovations in agriculture, resource use, and social structure. So one of the ways in which uh, Native Americans transform their environment is through the use of fire ecology. So that's uh, doing controlled burns in the forest. That's what we see here on the top left. Um, as Native societies began to use agriculture more and more, uh, they began utilizing Three Sisters farming, they become more sedentary, it means that they're staying in one place. Uh, and then another way in which they are uh, transforming their environment is through irrigation channels such as the chinampas that were created here in Tenochtitlan. All right, key concept 1.2, contact among Europeans, natives, and Amer Af uh, Americans and Africans resulted in the Colombian exchange and significant social, cultural, and political changes on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so the Colombian exchange was a huge catalyst for change. Uh, both Europe and the New World changed uh, dramatically because of it, because of the exchange of these crops, uh, exchange of diseases, uh, exchange of uh, labor systems. So once the encomienda system uh, had been done away with uh, because of the poor treatment of natives that was documented by Bartolomé de las Casas, it's going to give rise to the uh, uh, African slave trade. And so there's your causation and your effect that comes out of it. Uh, Next key concept is 1.2 Roman numeral one, European expansion into the Western hemisphere generated intense social, religious, political, and economic competition and changes with European societies. So the Spanish are going to dominate new world exploration for the majority of the 1500s. And as you can see from this map, they expanded greatly, but uh, that over expansion is going to be a uh, part of their demise. So other European countries are starting to see how successful they've been, all of the riches that they have been getting. And um, the over expansion is going to make it hard for them to really defend their position in all of these territories. Uh, in 1588, the Spanish Armada is going to be defeated by the British. And that's going to lead to a new age of European exploration in which the British begin to put their colonies in the new world. Next key concept is 1.2, Roman numeral two. The Colombian exchange and development of the Spanish empire in the Western hemisphere resulted in extensive demographic, economic, and social changes. 
Um, the uh, gold and silver that was extracted from uh, South America and from Mesoamerica uh, was being turned into coins and then that was changing economies all across Europe. It was leading to the start of capitalism. Uh, sometimes that gold wouldn't make it all the way back to Spain. It'd be intercepted by sea dogs. So these are, um, you know, a, a type of pirate, uh, usually British. Um, that would get that would attack Spanish ships going back to Spain and then steal the treasure that they had inside. Um, our uh, next key concept is 1.2 Roman numeral three. In their interactions, Europeans and Native Americans asserted divergent worldviews regarding issues such as religion, gender roles, family, land use, and power. Um, so we're going to see, or we saw, how these interactions between the Spanish and natives sometimes caused um, the natives to try and uh, state their sovereignty in their, their territory that they were trying to repel uh, the Spanish attacks. So the Spanish norms and beliefs uh, are eventually going to be forced upon its new world empires, but we will see some resistance. And finally, for the recap, uh, the environment was the most impactful in the patterns of life in pre-contact North and South America. Uh, agriculture of three sisters farming led to larger or sedentary societies. Colombian exchange impacted both sides dramatically, the New World and the Old World, uh, but it was fatal for the New World. A lot of people died because of the diseases that were being brought over. Uh, a lot of people died because of the subjugation uh, that the European powers uh, put the natives through. And Europeans further forced their beliefs on those that they conquered and the mineral wealth that was found in the New World leads to the start of capitalism in the old world. So notice how every part of the recap here, every bullet point you see uh, some sort of cause and effect, which is what you have to practice when you're uh, going through this course. The historical thinking of causation is the one that we focus on here. Next, we'll see comparison and continuity and change. Um, so we'll see you back for period number two. Uh, we're going to see the uh, first permanent settlement of uh, the English colonies in 1607, and it's going to take us all the way to uh, the uh, beginnings of the French and Indian War in 1754.